Hi, welcome to my channel. Today, we are going to learn Chapter 6, Circular Motion. So in this video, we are going to discuss on horizontal circular motion. Let us start with the first questions. Uh, the horizontal circular motions due to the uh, frictions between the tires and the road. Okay, so a car of mass 2000 kg. Okay, so 2000 kg rounds a circular turn of the radius. Okay, so the first information we get is m equals to 2000. And the second information is the radius 20 meter. The road is flat and the coefficients of the frictions uh, between the tires and the road is given. So mu. Okay, mu equals to 0 0.7. So the first question, they ask us to sketch a free body diagram of the car. Okay, so as we know, if let's say this is your car, it's at this position. Okay, if let's say this is your car. So free body diagram, usually we will ask five questions. The first one is weight. Yes, we have. Okay, it's acting downward. Okay, and we also have normal force. And okay, and also there is a frictional force. Huh? There's a frictional force so that this car will move in a circular motion. Okay, so frictional force is actually provided. Okay, provided our centripetal force. Okay, so now we need to draw or sketch the free body diagram. Huh? So I will sketch out. Okay, meaning that our free body diagram, the first one we have normal, we have the weight, and also we have the frictional force. Okay, so for this free body diagram, actually we can resolve it into two components, x component and also y component. Okay, determine the maximum car speed. Okay, without skipping, meaning that first we need to find out what is the uh, two equations first. Uh. The first equations that we have, if the resultant force on x component is equal to m a, okay, and this x component actually x component here is our centripetal force, okay, and what is provided our centripetal force actually is the frictional force, uh, frictional force. Okay, fictional force that will provide our centripetal force. So, for example, let's say this road is a smooth surface. Okay, if this is a smooth surface, no fictional force, meaning that this car will not go, go in a circular motion. Huh? It will go straight. Okay, it will go straight up. Okay, up from the circular path. Okay, so meaning that there must be a fictional force so that our car will rotate in a circular motion. Okay, so our F net equals to MA, where our F net actually is our frictional force. Okay, equals to MA. A is the accelerations. Okay, circular acceleration. So A here is equal to V square over R. So now we want to find what is the maximum car speed. Okay, frictional force we can find because frictional force is equal to mu N. Okay, equals to mv square over r. So we substitute all the value. Mu is 0 0.7. And we don't know. Mass is 2000. V, we don't know. V is the value that we want to find. R is equals to 20. Okay. So before we find the maximum speed, we need to find n first. So n we can use. F net for Y component equals to MA. Again, for Y component, the car is not moving up or down. Okay, it only move in a circular path. So therefore, our A is equals to zero. Or we can say actually normal force is equals to weight. So we substitute inside. M is two thousand. G is nine point eight one. Okay, so if you press calculator, you will get. 19,620 Newton. Okay, then you substitute into the first equations 19620. Okay, so finally you will get the, the velocity. Okay, so the velocity V, if you press calculator, V is equal to 11.5. 
seven four unit is meter per second. Okay, so this is the first type of questions where frictional force provided our centripetal force. Okay, so remember this case is centripetal force is equal to frictional force. So this is case one. Okay, case two we go to questions number five. Huh? Okay, the second case is usually our centripetal force is provided because of the tension. Okay, okay, so meaning that a ball of the mass is given m is one hundred and fifty grams, so it's equal to zero point one five kg. Usually, we will convert into SI unit. It's attached to one end of the string where the length here l is equal to one point one. The ball makes a two revolutions per second. So two revolution per second here actually they give us the information of omega. Two revolutions. One revolution is two pi. So two revolution is equal to four pi. Okay, times two pi. Yeah, two revolution will equal to four pi in one second. Okay, so meaning that we know that our omega equals to four pi radian per second. Okay, number one, sketch the free body diagram of the ball. So again, we need to sketch a free body diagram. Okay, ah, uh, so this free body diagram here. Also, we need to ask five questions. So we have mass, yes. We have weight, W. Ah, uh, we also have the tensions. Okay, so this tension actually contribute to the centripetal force. Okay, why I say like that because. Because of the string, the ball will move in a circular motion. So imagine if let's say there's no string, or maybe the string is cut off. So if let's say the string is cut off, meaning that the ball will not move in a circular motion. Okay. So therefore, the second case is centripetal force is provided by the tension. Ah, because of the tension, this ball will move in a circular motion. Okay. Similar like just now, because of the friction, the ball will move in. Ah, the car will move in a circular path. Okay. So here, our free body diagram, we only have two forces, ah, uh, weight, and also tension. Okay, so meaning that there's no normal force because there's no contact surface, um, and also we don't have external force, and also we don't have the frictional force, ah, uh, because there's no contact surface. Okay, first one determine the centripetal acceleration. We want to find centripetal acceleration. So centripetal acceleration equation is equal to v square over r, or you can write r omega square, or you can write v omega. Okay, so it's up to you. What are the informations you have? Ah, because we have three, ah, three equations. So now we have just now, ah, the string. They say the length. Actually, the length here we know that this is the center. So the length here actually is the radius. So we can write here r is equal to one point one meter. So since we have r and also omega, so we can use r omega squared. Okay, so I will use a centripetal acceleration is equal to r omega squared. Okay, where r is one point one, omega is equal to two pi radian per second. Okay, so therefore, okay, if you press calculator, remember there's a square omega square. So remember you need to square. Okay, so our centripetal acceleration is equal to seventeen. Oh no, set one hundred and seventy-three point three meter per second square. Okay, one hundred and seventy-three point seven meter per second square. Okay, next one, determine the tensions of the string. So tension, we know that our centripetal force is equal to tension. Okay, again, tension because of the tension, it will provide our centripetal force. So centripetal force, okay, is equal to tension, and we know that centripetal force is equal to m a and a equal to tension. Okay, so tension equal to m. Just now, m is zero point one five. A is the value here. We substitute into the equation one hundred n. Seventy-three point seven. So finally, we will have our tension of the string. So it's equal to twenty-six point zero six newton. Okay. So this is case two. Okay. Another one example. Okay. Ah, question is number six. 
So again, this is a ball. Okay, this is a ball, and because there is a um, tension, uh, okay, we can read together. Okay, a ball of mass. Okay, so the first information is m equals to zero point three five kg. It's attached to the end of the horizontal cord and is rotated in a circular circle of the radius. Okay, so the radius is equals to one meter. On a frictionless, meaning that there is no friction, uh, it's a smooth surface. Okay, if the cord will break when the tension in it exceeds eighteen newton, okay, determine the maximum and also minimum period of the ball. Okay, so these are the informations that we have where uh, we know that this ball is attached. Uh, let's say this is a table, and there is a string. Okay, this ball is attached to the cord. Okay, so. First, we must draw free body diagram first. Huh? Okay. Okay. So free body diagram. Here we have the weight mg because it's attached with the with a table. Okay, with the horizontal surface. But the horizontal surface no frictional. It's a smooth surface. So we only have normal force, no frictional force. And also because it's attached with a cord, a string. So there is a tension that acting in uh, towards the center. Okay. So again, for this equations, our Fc equals to ma. Okay, so who provides centripetal force? Now, why this ball can move in a circular path? Meaning that why it has a it has a circular motions because there is the tension. So Fc here is provided because of the tension. Okay, so if let's say it break, meaning that there is no there is no centripetal force anymore. Okay, so tension equals to ma. And again, our uh, our the first one we want to find speed, right? Okay. So a we have three equations. Either we use v square over r, r omega square, or v omega. Okay. So since we have r, and we want to find v, v is the value we want to find. So we want to use v square over r because we have r, and we want to find v, right? So I will use this equation. Okay, I will use v square over r. Okay, it depends on what are the informations you have. Okay, so if the cord will break when the tension, uh, so tension here, the maximum tension is equal to eighteen newton. So I will substitute inside here, eighteen uh, newton equals to m zero point zero point three five. V is the value we want to find. R is equals to one. Okay, so why this is the maximum? Okay, when T maximum, then your V also maximum. Okay, because your T is directly proportional to your V. Okay, when T maximum, the speed also maximum. Okay, so V that we get here is actually V maximum. Okay, because we substitute T maximum just now, so this value V is V maximum. Where we will get fifteen point one two meter per second. Okay, so this is the case also where F C equals to tension. Okay, so this is actually second case. Okay, B find the minimum period of the ball. Okay, minimum period of the ball we can use these equations. Omega equals to two pi over t, where omega we don't have, but we know that V equals to r omega. Omega will equal to v over r. Okay, so we substitute here v over r equals to two pi over the period. So when uh, t, okay, we want to find the minimum period. So minimum period equals to two pi r over v. Okay, so again we want to find minimum period. Okay, because just now the value v here is maximum. Okay, so meaning that the period that we get is minimum uh, because we know that period is inversely proportional to the velocity. If the velocity is maximum, meaning that the period that we get is minimum. Okay, so you substitute inside here where uh, t minimum is equal to two pi r is equal to one meter. V is the value we get fifteen point one two. So if you press calculator, you will get zero point four one six second. 
okay so that's all for this video so please go to the next video where we will discuss on the vertical circular motion okay thank you class see you on next video bye